Please welcome to the stage one of the country's leading actresses, the fabulous, the brilliant, the one and only Julie Walters. I just felt all the best writing and all the best work was here. Yes, particularly with a certain writer called Victoria Wood. Especially with a certain <laughs> V. Wood, yes. Uh, why did it work so well, the combination between the two of you, do you think? Because she wrote brilliant things. <laughs> and she just, she's just a really, really clever, brilliant woman. And, I mean, you know, you'd ask her to write a sketch and she could write it in three minutes and it would be mm. genius stuff. You know, so she wrote great stuff and she wrote it for me. You know, she was very, very generous. That's why it works, <laughs> I feel. Um, I, I, and I think it was, yes, that there weren't many women. Well, there weren't. There were none. We, at, at that time, with Wooden Waters, we were the first, on telly anyway, to, um, to be there. So I think that, that, that put us in the spotlight. Did you used to develop characters together then? No, people keep saying, and marvellous your collaboration with Victoria Wood. And I go, yes, that's right. <laughs> but in actual fact, she writes it and I do it. I mean, I interpret it a bit, you know, because as you do as an actor, but, you know, generally, she, that's her. Another very famous uh, real-life character that you played was Mo Molum. I remember talking to you at the time and you said at first you were very hesitant about taking on that role. Yes, uh, yeah. Well, first of all, I read the script and thought, this is fantastic. Fantastic. It was a really, I couldn't believe what I was reading. I was shocked by the script, apart from anything else. I didn't know the, any, the half of it, basically. And I thought, oh, I've got to do this. This is amazing. So I rang the agent and said, yeah, I'd, I'd really like to do it. And then they sent me some footage of her. And I thought, oh, I'm just, I don't look like her. And I thought, I don't look anything like her. And I thought, it's just going to be, people aren't going to see through the disguise. And I just, so I rang the agent and I said, I don't think this is a good idea, Paul. I really don't think it's a good idea. And he said, with respect, Bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I got over it, and, and and I said to Chrissy, who made my makeup tonight, mm -hmm. you know, how are we can do it, and she and she, we we, we did a sitting to put a bald cap on because she her hair went quite quickly, and it was mm -hmm. over that period of time, so we had to have different wigs. So we sat for hours having this bald cap made. God, and then two minutes later, it was, it was curling up, or something was wrong with it. So in the end, I said. What if I shave my head? She was just waiting for me to say that, of course. Because <laughs> I'd be in the chair at four o'clock in the morning to have that put on. You know, the, you know so I shaved it and that was a, rev that was a revelation. Was it, was it quite emotional doing that? It was a weird experience. Mm. I, you know, I really feel for people who lose their hair in that way. I felt mm. terribly sad. It's different for women than mm. it is for men. And it looked like all my mother's male relatives, only not as attractive. <laughs> <laughs> it's awful. <laughs> I didn't want my husband to see me. How did he react? He said, it's just, a, just like I thought you'd look. <laughs> I said, what do you mean? He said, like Harry Hill. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a lot you? of your performances have involved song and dance. Uh, and we saw a bit of Mamma Mia, a lovely scene there. <laughs> do you not enjoy watching that again? No. No. I didn't enjoy that. Well, well what happened? We saw, there was going to be a rehearsal. And the, 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 the choreographer said, well, you know, you can do your own thing. If I said, yeah, I'll do my own thing. So I didn't have to rehearse, I didn't want to rehearse it, I was scared of it. So I didn't rehearse it, which was very foolish. Because come the day, they're all sitting there, aren't they? Meryl and Piers and Colin and every, and all the dancers and all the other actors are all sitting along the table and I've got to go along it. Well, I had a coughing fit and nearly died. <laughs> and when when we, we all went in, the, Meryl and Christine and I went in to do Dancing Queen in the studio. Yes. We did the first thing and the boys, the, you know, the ABBA boys were there. So of course we all were singing it, thinking we'd got it right and it wrong. And I remember Christine saying, 30 years of singing it wrong. <laughs> and that, it's absolutely right, because you feel you know them, you know, and there's just slight notes out of here. They're quite complicated. So that, but they were great to sing, you know. It's so got a sense of fun to in it. In that studio, did Benny and Bjorn give you notes on the singing then? Oh, yeah, they were there. The very first day was quite nerve-wracking. Well, I learned, I'd, first of all, before we went into the, the first thing we did was record the songs. So, so I went and to the, with the MD, and uh, I did the harmonies on them. So I, learned, well, I had to go and learn those. And, and then we went in, going into the studio. So then I met Meryl Streep, who's like an icon to me, even though she's only a year older than I. It <laughs> feels like I grew up watching her, you know. And, um, and, then, and there are the ABBA boys. And within like five minutes, we're round the bloody piano singing it. It was a wonder I didn't have another of those coffee bits, actually. <laughs> but it was fine. I mean, they're really nice. We've been reading a lot in the papers recently about how hard it is to become an actor. Do you, do you feel that it's tough for the young actors starting out today? Oh, yeah, much tougher. There's mm. no reps for a start. Mm. That's all gone, really. 
and that's where most of my generation of actors started. And it's a great place to start. You're away from the, the central, you're away from London, and away mm. from everything. And, and uh, it, it, so it's brilliant from that point of view. Of course, there are no grants either. Mm. So it's very hard for people to go to drama school unless th their parents can afford it. Mm. So I think that's so really it sad. So it is excluding a, a, whole, you know, a whole level of, of society. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And the arts need to be represented by, you know, by everyone. And does it alarm you sometimes to, to see the way in which fame has become so all-important. Some people, you know, there are all the talent shows on telly. And people are yeah. desperate to be famous. Yes, it's kind of misinterpreted, isn't it, fame? As mm. if it's something wonderful. Michael Caine once said it, didn't he? You know, what's it like to be rich and famous? He said, well, I'd much rather just be rich. <laughs> <laughs> it does become quite tricky sometimes then, does it? Well, it can be. To be, be recognised. Yes, it, you don't... Well, mm. no, who would want it all the time, you know? I mean, mm. I have stood in... Marks and Spencers, I've, I've told this story before, but standing in Marks and Spencers, looking at the underwear, two women are standing a foot from me, or maybe two feet from me. Both, they, I could feel out of the corner of my eye, one of them go, look at me like this. And I thought, oh, I'm, gonna, I'm going to move off in a minute. And I heard her say, that's Julie Waters, isn't it? I'm, I'm standing right there, you could hear it. <laughs> and to her friend, and the friend said, no. <laughs> <laughs> Not dressed like that. <laughs> I might, I, my eyes immediately shot down to my feet because not long before this incident, I had gone out in my slippers. <laughs> and, um, and they weren't any ordinary slippers either. They had bobbles on, proper slippers. You know, and I already was in Guildford, so it was too late to go home. <laughs> so I just went shopping in them, but anyway. Now, to finish, we're going to have a, a tribute to educating Rita. This is a, a quick fire. Um, qu round of questions called Educating James. So if you could just oh give me God. quick answers to these. Um, what would you be if you weren't an actor? A writer, I think. Mm. Have you always long to write? writing. Oh, yeah, I like it, yes, yes. Do you write in your own time then? No, well, I've written my autobiography, which I loved yes. writing, and I wrote a novel, which I also loved writing. It took me ten years. It's not Anna Karenina. <laughs> so saying say it took ten years is not a good thing, really, I think. But anyway, yes, but I do enjoy the thing of it, yes. I'd probably mm. go for that if the work dried up. <laughs> and what always makes you laugh? Really crude things, probably. <laughs> Slapstick a bit. Uh, Victoria Ward makes yes. me laugh, always. <laughs> um, what makes you cry? Kindness. Really? I find that very touching. Yeah. I think it's very underrated. Mm. Um, the goodness in people. Mm. Um, I find touching. Mm. And people triumphing against the odds, you know, that's, yes. yeah. That's nice. Uh, where are you at your happiest? Um, at the moment, probably, with my husband, on a Saturday night, watching Breaking Bad. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Do you have a favourite joke? Yes, do you want to hear it? Yes, please. Um, well, a mouse met an elephant in the jungle. Uh, probably everybody's heard this. Anyway, um, the, the elephant, the, 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 the mouse says to the elephant, oh my God, you're absolutely enormous. And the elephant says, yes, and you're really, really tiny. And the mouse says, yes, but I haven't been well. <laughs> <laughs> That's my favorite joke. <laughs> The other one is, there was a peanut, um, and it went for a walk on Clapham Common. It was assaulted. <laughs> <laughs> That's <I> good. <laughs> uh, what, are you, <laughs> what are you most proud of? My daughter. Mm. Very nice, yes. What's your favourite comedy character of all time? Not, not one that you've played. Oh, God. Oh, that's my favourite, not one. I think Peter Sellers in The Pink Panther is mm. one of them. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Oh, God, I can't think now. It'll come to me, won't it, after we've gone? I'll come running after, up the street <laughs> after you. Um, <laughs> what, I've just thought of things that's gone out of my head again. It's the trouble with being this yeah. age. Whole blocks of things go out of your memory. It's <laughs> deadly with lines. Um, uh, or you could pick one of your own. No, I wouldn't do no. that. <laughs> well, I could, um, 
Well, I'll tell you who I absolutely adore, Jack Black, the oh, School yes. of Rock, oh, I think yes. made me die with laughter. <laughs> He's just so funny in it. Great. Um, uh, anyway, yes. Uh, finally, who would play you in a biopic of your life? At what age, though? Ah. Tracy Ullman, because everyone used to get... She's a great actress, and everyone mm. used to get us mixed up. They used to say to me, Oh, I loved educating Rita. And your latest record. <laughs> <laughs> So I used to, in the end, I used to say, oh, good, I'm glad you like it. <laughs> I gave up saying, no, that's, never mind. <laughs> I'd like to say thank you for everyone uh, for coming and to the event sponsors, Rathbones. But most of all, a massive thank you to Julie Walters. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. How would you describe Julie Walters? I think extremely funny, extremely dedicated, and extremely mischievous. The real Julie Walters is a remarkably funny person. What's your top tip for learning lines for actors? Well, what would they be for anybody else? <laughs> the Richard Griffiths taught me to write them out. He said, write out the lines, and eventually you feel like you're writing the script, and uh, it goes in through your fingers.